in the last year, my team and I have helped tens and dozens of families relocate from another state here to Georgia. And a vast majority of the families that we've helped were from California. And so we get calls every single week from people saying that they just cannot afford to live there anymore, they don't like the politics, or they're sick of renting and they finally want to be able to own a home of their own. Now, obviously, California and Georgia are two very different states, so how do they compare? Well, recently, I decided to go to California and check it out myself. there is that the differences are endless. California has an estimated population of almost 39 million people in 22, while Georgia rings in at just under 11 million. We are nearly one fourth the size of California. And speaking of size, well, obviously you can tell California is about three times bigger than Georgia. So in some ways it makes sense that their population would be so much bigger as well. But in this case, clearly bigger isn't always better because so many people are leaving California and coming here to little old Georgia. Obviously, there's the whole West Coast versus East Coast debate as well. And as an East Coast resident, I of course root for the East Coast in this debate. However, when you look at the states surrounding you that are easiest to visit, California has easy access to Oregon, Idaho, and Washington, which are obviously full of gorgeous scenery. And sure, we can easily go down to Florida and enjoy the beach, but no offense to Alabama, but you aren't that pretty. <laughs> and it doesn't have the best of a reputation. And then you also hear that of people going to Virginia just for fun. And then there's South Carolina. There's Charleston. Charleston's really great. And you've got some really great beaches in South Carolina as well. But, well, you get the picture, right? Tennessee, though. Tennessee. Tennessee's got some great mountains, great places to visit like Nashville. So there's tons of great places that you can go and visit, but you know, it's not California. California, you've got Hawaii that's really close that you can hop on a plane to. For us here on the East Coast, that's gonna take at least, well, I don't even know how many hours in a plane because I've never been there. Uh, and I also hear about a lot of people in California going to Mexico for fun. Although Mexico right now is a little bit iffy if you read recent headlines. So here in Georgia, we have to go a lot farther to appreciate beautiful national parks. California also has Yosemite and Joshua Tree, Sequoia, the Redwood Forest. And you can, like I said, go up here to the Tennessee Mountains, Blue Ridge Mountains, beautiful. And we have the Appalachian Trail, which starts here in Georgia. And we do have a few national parks, but they're not at the same caliber as California. And nothing is famous and vast as what you can find in California. You know, and California has the beautiful beaches and the coastline. And here you can drive down to Savannah and you've got beautiful oak trees and live oak trees with the Spanish moss. It's great and you have some good character here in Georgia coastline, but it doesn't quite stack up to California. Another big difference between California and Georgia is the political landscape. Let's face it, California is a blue state and Georgia has historically been a red state or a white red state. Some would call us purple now with the recent election when Georgia turned blue in 2020. I'm sure you saw the news. You couldn't miss it if you turned on the TV during the election time period and Georgia frequently still makes headlines surprisingly for political purposes. Although many people still call and want to move here solely based on politics with the assumption that Georgia is a red state. I'll leave that up to you to determine what you would consider Georgia. So if you're looking for a red crowd, you can definitely find it here in Georgia. Make no mistake, they're everywhere. But this quote um, kind of explains how we became a blue state. It says definitions differ about the exact parameters of the Atlanta metropolitan area, but 10 counties are part of a governing collaborative called the Atlanta Regional Commission. Almost 4.7 million people live in those 10 counties and they account for around 45% of the state's population. Biden won about 65% of the two-party share of the votes in these 10 Atlanta area counties. So obviously politics are a very personal subject. So I'm, I'm reading about facts and as real estate agents, we don't talk about politics 
at all. It's not really something that we want to get into. Um, but if you're looking for one thing or another, you're going to have to do research on your own. But just know Georgia has something here for everyone when it comes to politics. Aside from the political climate, what about the actual climate? Of course, California has a little bit of everything. You've got both snowy mountains and you have a dry desert. But the majority of calls we get are from folks located in the southern part of California in the Los Angeles area. So for comparison's sake, I'm gonna be referring to that area when I'm comparing it here to the North Metro Atlanta area where my team is located and where we mostly serve. So in Los Angeles, you guys seem to have a perfect 60 or 70 degree temp all year long, aside from the hotter summer months. Now, it always cracks me up to see people who I follow on social media pull out their puffer coats when the temperature goes down to 50 degrees and freak out when there's rain. So rain is something that we're all too familiar here with in North Georgia. In fact, when I ask people who moved here from California what they think the major differences between these two states is, is how much it rains here in Georgia. You would think we're Seattle. Obviously, we don't get that much rain, but when you come from California where it's a rare occurrence to get any rain, it might feel like a lot. I also got a surprising comment or phone call from a client that moved here and they were shocked at how many thunderstorms we had. Thunder is normal here. We get those during the spring and summer and it's, it's a normal occurrence and it's not something that's scary, but for them it was a very, very different experience. I think one of the major differences in the two areas is that the weather seems pretty mild year round in Los Angeles and here in North Georgia, you know, it's all over the place at times. We always joke, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes and it's gonna change. So in January, we had our yearly snowfall that I talk about and it shut down the state for about a day or two. It pretty much snows once, once a year in the Metro Atlanta area and it's a huge event. And so uh, we did get upwards of five inches in some part of town. It was very beautiful. You couldn't even get on Facebook without seeing everyone's pictures of, of everyone in the front yard building their snowman. Um, right now there's a meme going around talking about the 12 seasons of Georgia instead of four. This week, as of filming this video that we're in, we're in what we call the spring deception. We just had that snow. It's now warm again, but in another week or two, it's gonna get another cold blast. You know, just two days ago, it was 80 degrees and we were in flip flops and short sleeve shirts. And then in the morning, you know, you wake up and it's cold and you need that puffer jacket because it's 42 degrees out. So the weather in Georgia is wildly unpredictable. And I won't lie, I really loved the warm, sunny days and cooler evenings that, you know, I had when I was out in California compared to, you know, it kind of felt like a, a Georgia fall. That's not something that we quite experience in the warmer summer months here in Georgia. It gets really hot. Something California does have to worry about that's wildly different than Georgia is wildfires and earthquakes. We've all seen the horrible wildfires that have blazed across hundreds of thousands of acres in California and people frequently needing to evacuate their homes because of these fires. I could not imagine living in an area where you have that threat. So California is a very, very dry state, which like we talked about earlier is drastically different from Georgia. Another thing Californians deal with quite regularly that rarely happens here in Georgia and that is earthquakes. In fact, um, the San Andreas Fault in California, because of that, they, they experience both minor and some major earthquakes. Obviously the building codes and things like that are drastically different because of the earthquakes as well, which makes the cost of building houses more expensive. And you know, that is a factor that you have to take into account whenever you're living somewhere where the cost of living is higher because of those things. Now I have to say that our local news report uh, did report a minor earthquake back in 2019 uh, near Lake Sinclair, Georgia. And in fact, Georgia's had about 240 very minor earthquakes since 1900. There's been a couple that I can recall where people felt something and sadly I missed it. I don't know. I never felt anything. But to put that in perspective, the USGS reported that in the state of California on July 7th, 2019, there were 158 minor earthquakes in one day. That's crazy. One of the biggest and most obvious differences between these two states is the cost of living. So according to our local MLS system, which covers a vast majority of the state, the average sales price of a home here in Georgia uh, back in January was $405,000. Now I don't have access to the MLS system in California to get the same calculations, but According to California's Association of Realtors, California's median home price is forecasted to rise 5% to $834,000 in 2022. 
that's nearly double the cost of a home here in Georgia. I think a lot of people assume right off the bat that living in Georgia is going to be so much cheaper than living on the West Coast. And sure, you know, in many aspects it is. But I think it's important to notice that the median sales price of a home here is $405,000. That's still a lot for some people's budgets. And honestly, this doesn't get you anywhere near as much of a house as it once did. You know, sometimes we get phone calls from people expecting really cheap living here in Georgia. And while that may have been true five, six years ago, obviously a lot of people are moving here to Georgia just like they're moving to other parts of the country. So cost of living has risen when it comes to houses. Everyone's trying to find houses. You get the picture. You're going to pay more today than what you did obviously back then. and you know, you're looking at a median sales price of $405,000. If you were to compare what you exactly get for your money in each state, you can definitely see the difference though. You know, for example, you have this home, which is located in Northridge, California. It's in a neighborhood just outside of Los Angeles. This home closed for $1.37 million just a couple of weeks ago. It was a five bedroom, three bathroom home built in 1961 with 2,300 square feet. So this home is 60 years old, definitely needs cosmetic repairs, but it does have a pool. And so if you were to kind of take a comparison, right now there's a home listed in Alpharetta, one of the most highly sought after suburbs of Atlanta for $1.3 million. This home has six bedrooms, seven bathrooms, and it comes in at a massive 7,200 square feet. That's more than three times the size of the home that just sold in California for only $70,000 more. Now this home was built in 2008, so it's 48 years newer than the other home, and you've got tons of upgrades, and it too has a pool, plus you have a finished basement. So basements, we have basements here in, in Georgia, that's another huge difference. So if you were to look up a home for $405,000 in California, which, like I mentioned, is the median sales price of a home here in Georgia, you can't actually find one. The only thing that you can find that's gonna fit that price range are apartment units. So let's talk about another huge difference and that is taxes. So here in Georgia, income tax rates range from 1% to almost 6%. And in California, that ranges from 1% all the way up to 12%. Now we here in Georgia also pay both state and local ta sales tax, which usually averages about 7% according to the tax foundation. Where in California, it's about 7.25%. The difference though, is that in most areas of California, Local jurisdictions have added district taxes that increase those anywhere from, you know, a tenth of a percent to almost a full percent. Some areas may have more than one district tax in effect, so those taxes stack up. Another thing that you frequently hear people talk about when kind of comparing California and Georgia is the cost of food there. So while we were in California, we uh, spent an evening over at Manhattan Beach, and for dinner one evening, we walked down the beach and we looked up all the addresses of the incredible homes in the area and we oogled and googled <laughs> uh, these homes and, and we're kind of shocked at these several million dollar price tags and you know while we were there I mentioned that we had dinner and so one thing that I was surprised about was that the food wasn't as expensive as what I was expecting or what you hear people talk about. We of course went out to several nicer restaurants uh, since we were on a fun work trip but I felt like the prices were what I would expect to pay for good quality you know restaurant here in Georgia you know somewhere like the Avalon or Pont City Market in Atlanta and we had some really amazing food while we were there. So what do you think about the differences between California and Georgia? If you are from California, I know you have some opinions on this, so let us know in the comments. And of course, if you're thinking about making the move here to Georgia, our team is the team to help handle that move for you and help you find your dream home here in Georgia. You can find our contact information below this video. We look forward to hearing from you.